these might be Nairobi's most insane place when it comes to urban planning and development. And I'm saying so because it has some of the most interesting aspects when it comes to leading a good life and also planning for any area. And some of the standout features in this area is that it has one of the highest population density per mile square in residential areas in the country. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is among top five in the country. That's so because it has very, very high population in a small area, right? Secondly, we're talking about it, in fact, being an area with some of the most interesting apartment building structures and most importantly, the proximity of buildings to each other. Guys, this area, the buildings are very close to each other that you reach in there the first time, you actually have a shock. You'll feel like you're in a space whereby there is multiple buildings surrounding you and in fact, even for them, some buildings are sharing a wall apart, which is kind of insane. And then the third thing is that despite this area being a small area in size, actually it has thousands of small businesses which are thriving very well. Ranging from people, for example, selling groceries, people having their own retail shops, others even making furniture and so forth. So it has a good number of small businesses which are doing very well. That's why in this video, I'm going to share with you the positive attributes about this place and also the negative attributes. In essence, the challenges which people and also that particular area goes through and most of them border challenges around residential and environmental protection and stuff like that. Having said that, welcome to Pipeline Estate in Embakasi South, Nairobi County in Kenya. And also, you are all much welcomed to the Money Daily YouTube channel. My name is Afagza Sifunam. By the way, if you're new here, kindly consider subscribing to this channel for you to be getting awesome insights with regards to how you can multiply your money and also insights with regards to current affairs and places across the country. Having said that, Pipeline Estate is 10 kilometers from Nairobi CBD and it has a population of about 100,000 people. Yes, 100,000 people in such a small area. And of course, this constitutes mixed age groups due to the low cost of living, making it attractive to all kind of age groups out there. And beyond that, this area is actually driven by service industry. In essence, people doing business to earn a living. That's why this area has thousands of thriving small businesses cross-cutting different areas of the economy, which actually propel the economy of pipeline and Bakasi South in Nairobi. And People in this area are up very early to start their businesses or even for some who commit to go, for example, in the CBD to go to other parts of the city to work. They're normally up very early and actually this area functions like a 24-hour economy because even late night, businesses are still open and people are going about their hustle. You might be wondering, what makes pipeline in Nairobi tick? Let's talk about that. The very first thing is that it is a cosmopolitan area right with this i mean it has people from all backgrounds think about it all tribes in kenya actually you're gonna find at least a representation in pipeline embakasi and this actually makes the area very robust because each and every person brings in what they're about and also with this mix of culture it actually brings out the friendly and humble neighborhood in this area and of course most of the occupants here are citizens of kenya right most of the people here are locals. And then the second thing that makes Pipeline Embakasi tick is its closeness to the Nairobi Central Business District. Yes, of course, when someone is in Nairobi, they might be having errands within the town, in essence, the CBD. And it's quite good in case someone lives close to the Central Business District. And actually, Pipeline Embakasi just provides that. You know, it is only 10 kilometers from Nairobi CBD, hence accessibility being pretty easy because in a matter of a few minutes, you're going to be there and actually can transit between Pipeline and Embakasi and Nairobi CBD with ease. And then the third thing which makes Pipeline tick is that it has affordable food. Yes, 
with this population which actually most of the people there are from low to middle income level actually also the food in the area is very very affordable and there are multiple options of foods there for example you can get foods from from for example supermarkets out there where it has multiple supermarkets like for example jack Mills supermarket quick Mart supermarket mwindi mosi supermarket just to mention a few beyond these also it has multiple retail shops it has many hotels it has good joints of street food and even different places selling fresh groceries so food in this area is very accessible and also affordable and then the fourth thing which makes pipeline tick is that it also has cheap and affordable housing units which by the way is a cool thing even though we're talking about there being congestions with regards to many buildings being in this place and actually most of them actually don't even have space apart and there are very very many also the housing units here are quite affordable i know cheap is relative but in this context it's actually cheap compared to the peers in the city you know we're talking about for example get someone there out there for example has somewhere between five thousand to ten thousand thousand kenya shillings you can easily get a bed sitter or a studio in this area with about eight thousand to about thirteen thousand kenya shillings you can easily get a one bedroom in this area and with somewhere between eleven thousand to about sixteen thousand or so you can get a decent two bedroom apartment in this area and list goes on and on so you're talking about it being affordable when it comes to actually someone being able to afford a good house and even be able to pay rent which is manageable assuming someone is working or even their business is doing well and then the last thing is that also Papen and Bakasi is very close to the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. In case someone travels a lot, they might decide, for example, to put up in pipeline or adjacent neighborhoods because it is very close to the airport. So accessibility to the airport is also guaranteed. On the other side, what makes living in pipeline quite a headache, right? What are the challenges of living in pipeline? The very first challenge is that there is perpetual traffic jam more so during peak hours even though it is close to nairobi central business district also this area has traffic jams most of talking about the outer ring road jogo road in case someone is coming into town most of the times being quite congested also talking about mombasa road being quite congested in case someone is actually coming into town at the peak hours or even going back home at peak hours which can actually also hold someone back a bit and make someone late in case they don't plan themselves very well more so if they are not in this area secondly we're talking about there being dust and mud of course these are exclusive depending on the season during wet season we're talking about the rainy season there being mud in this area because of the type of soil there and in case it's sunny we're talking about there being being it, it, it being sunny out there hot weather and so forth it has also dust because of the ongoing constructions and also the type of soil in this area right and then beyond this the third thing which is a challenge in this area is that actually the population density versus amenities yes i told you it has a population of about 100k people but the amenities in this area don't match the population to give you an example as of few years ago we we're talking about not there being not even a single public primary school in pipeline in bakasi and you talk about there being a population of almost 100,000 people this tells you the government is not working very hard to wrap up the amenities at the same pace compared to the population and even beyond this water rationing is a real thing there in that water comes on a couple of days in a month in in a, in a week maybe three days a week or so and then there are the rationing of water too to assist at least facilitate the distribution of water in the eastlands area of the country right and even beyond that there is a challenge with hygiene in that there is a drainage challenge in the area the drainage in Papua and Bakasi is not the most ideal and i think over years because of the expansion of population and when people coming on board also this has caused drainage to become much and then the fifth thing which is a challenge when it comes to living in pipeline and also doing business in pipeline is that there is some seasonal crime and this is so because there have been cases in the recent past of people being mugged people being shot people being robbed in pipeline and bakasi more so targeting small businesses and this of course is seasonal crime which is actually driven by there being disparity in income levels in that area and in the society in general because there are some people out there who are acting a living and also another good number of people out there who are very much unemployed and stressed out so it causes that thrift and this intermittent crime 
is actually one of the things which a few years back has spoiled the name of Pipeline and Bakasi. But in the recent past, we've seen at least there being enhanced security in the area. As I look to conclude this video, you all need to understand that Pipeline and Bakasi is a good place to live in, especially when someone is starting life in the city. Mostly because of affordability, convenience comes to food, you know, cheap housing and so forth. 